Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to do a second video for Wavelink, which is called Halo Polar. It is AC3000. And I have to mention that this is a mesh network. Why we're making a second video is because there are more little details that we want to add to it because it's such a good router. Give you that ease that you need inside of your house. Even if you want to go to your backyard or you want to go to your driveway in front of your house, you will have a perfect internet. So that's way you have access with more than three bars all the time. I do not want to forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click the, click the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with your friends and family and make sure you click the notification icon, select all in order to get notified once we have a new video out. On top of that, if you have a question, drop them at the bottom of the video. We love to help you out ASAP. And don't forget to click the, click the like button. It really motivates us to make these type of videos quickly with a little more detail every time. All right, you can see that the box is ginormous. And once we open it, there's another box inside of it, which has a beautiful design around it. And it has a little plastic that you have to keep ripping all the way around in order to open it. And once that part is done too, you can just open the top and all of the three nodes are sitting inside. Also, you have a little white box and that white box, once you open it, all of the power supply and the paperwork are inside of it. Three power adapters and an Ethernet cable. It comes with a quick start guide. It has a lot of little details inside of it that you can read and set up your router easily. It also comes with this position guide for MASH devices and it will show you exactly through the picture on how you can set it up and where is a good area to set this up. You can see that this package comes with three power supplies. They're all the same. The connector is made for Canada, United States. It is 5 volt, 4 amps and 20 watt and the connector that will be connected to the router itself. Now it also comes with this RJ45 or Ethernet cable. It is roughly about a meter long. Here is the router. This is how it really looks. You have a nice baby blue picture on the top, sticker on the top that you can take off. So this router do come with some connections. It's starting from the right side, you have the little reset hole, and then you have the on and off switch. You also have a little pairing button, so this way you can pair from one node to another. Also you have the power connection, you have two LAN connections, you have the Ethernet port, which will be the WAN or WAN connection. Also you have one USB connection. That's the best part. And if you look in the bottom part of it, you have lots of holes for ventilation. You have four little lakes. Now when you put it down on the table, it just stays still. Now when you look on the top, it has a nice design to it and you have a little cut, but the other two are identical to this. But let's just get this connected one by one and show you exactly how it will look. So for connection, we gotta make sure that this is turned off and then connect the power first there you go and then we will connect the ethernet wire to it so that way we, we can get some internet and then connect the next rg45 to the router and then the other side connect it to your computer and then turn on the router so on the manual there is a little spot that will tell you exactly what ip address you have to type so in this case, I already done it. So mine is 192.168.10.1 and not 1.1. So it's 10.1 at the end of it. And then press enter. And this is going to be presented to you. It kind of looks like you are on a mobile, but this is directly to a computer. So this is what we need to enter. So your default password is always admin. You're going to type it and then press enter. It takes a couple of seconds and it will take you to this system setup. First thing first is your country region. So we always going to put this on global. And then over here, you need to find Eastern region which where we are so we're going to select that and then it says to choose a brand new password now make it something that you could remember and once you type it it will be showing to you so i am not going to show mine but as a default i'm going to put something very simple for now but make sure that you do have all of these characters in the bottom that will tell you so make sure you cover all of that and then go next 
So in this case, my password is set up already and I'm going to click on save. Now it will go into sync it and then it's going to refresh. So you have to make sure you click save and there you go. That part has been done. Then you're going to see exactly where you're getting your internet from. So some people already set it up through a something like DSL then you require for this DHCP to be changed to either PPPOE or you're going to be on a static IP address. So for me, I am on DHCP, which is for home internet. And here is the SSID that shows up right now, but I will change this to something very simple that we could remember all the time. And since I already have one, this is my second one. So I'm going to name it XCTEX. I'm going to put a little space. There you go. And I'm going to put a little space over here too, which means XCTEX dash main. And then I'm going to put a little space. I'm going to name it zero two. So this way it's a little bit different for everybody to know exactly what to enter. So over here, it says the password link must be about 10 characters. So in this case, I'm just going to type something that I always do. And there you go. Once you set up your password, what you're going to enter, make sure it is 10 digit, make sure you have one capital letter, and then you have to have one or two digits in it in order to make it go next. So once it is going to go through, this is what you should see right now. It is just going to set up step by step of see exactly how far it will go through. So there you go. We're roughly about 66% set up. Now, this is going to be a mesh network. So there you go. Once it is all done, just going to click on refresh. And there you go. Once it comes up, you should see it like this. And then you're going to enter your new password that you set up. And automatically just takes you in. So here you go. This is just a setup. We haven't even connected the other two nodes. That's why it says offline and it says offline. But you can see my channel is sitting on 36. And also I am on 5G network and 2.4. And for 2.4, I'm sitting on number eight, but both names are the same. So that's why this is set up as a mesh network. So let's go next. Here's the Wi-Fi settings. You can go here and this is where you will be able to set up your touch link, which is right over here. And that way you just have to tap your phone on top of your device. And also you can tap the name on your device and it automatically connects without you even entering a password, which is kind of cool. And the next part is the mesh network. You can click on it and you can see that right now the router is set up, but your extenders, the other two that we have is not set up yet. The MAC addresses war for this, which is a really good thing. So let's get out of it. The part is region. Now we already set that up, so we don't have to worry about it. But the Wi-Fi configuration, we already set this part up. Again, on the start, we do not have to worry. And also same thing for 2.4 or 5G. We're going to use it as a mesh network to make everything connect on the same name. So we do not have to worry about connecting everything on either 2.4 or 5G or better results when it connects to the internet. So here you go. This is your internet settings. All of the information is here. Now, one thing I want to mention to you guys is if you would like us to make a video for any of these sections, please bring it at the bottom of the video. We will love to help you out and make those parts available for you so you can learn more about it. Something like USB storage. Now, we already captured this part on a different video, but if you like, we will make another video for it. Something like backup and restore. Upgrade firmware is right over here. If there is anything available, you will see it and you can say upgrade and it will get upgraded. But you can see right now when I click on on check for updates, it will come back that everything is on a latest version, which is a perfect thing to look for. Now, another part is how to connect the second note, which is right over here. So we will capture it on a video on what buttons you need to press. And then you will see that that it comes over here and it will show you that it is going to be online. So let's do that right now. To get these two paired, you have to make sure that the light is on. So here you go. Now this is turned on and the light on the top is now you can see that this is a different color than the one that is connected. So now to get them sync, you have to press and hold the little pairing button for a few seconds. And then same thing goes for this one. You hold it for a few seconds and you let go. And here's the first one that just got connected. You have to press that button in the bottom for a couple of seconds and let it blink till it gets connected. That's number one. Let's connect the second note. So now in order to pair the third one, we already connected that one. So you're going to press this button again for a couple of seconds. 
and then let go now press the one that you want to pair with there's a little button you have to press this and there you go now all of them are connected so when you click on the status now it should show up properly so first don't worry about the speed part at all because we're going to test it out but here's my router here's my extender number one and extender number two so now we are fully connected so let's just go through first and go into speed test to see exactly what type of numbers we're going to get out of this so here you go this is the first test that we're going to perform now remember that this computer is connected as a LAN connection to this and we're going to connect it as a Wi-Fi after this to do a test so we're just going to do one test we're going to click this to see exactly how fast if an internet connection we're getting at the moment remember that it always going to be defer depends when or what you're going to be connected to in order to get this type of internet speed so yes right now we are connected via LAN and this is what type of speed that we are getting on this computer now that is a download rate out of a gigabit and remember that we have a lot of things connected right now and everybody's home to watch either tv or do their homeworks and that's why we received 723.27 for our download and we received 32.77 for our upload so now we're going to disconnect our lan you can keep an eye on this part and there you go now we're going to connect it as wi-fi so we will click here there you go first one on the list so select it click connect and it will ask you for the password and i was just connecting and there you go now we are connected so let's go through and test it one more time to see what type of numbers we're going to get out of a wi-fi connection so let's see this is going to be good to know exactly what type of numbers you can get from this running on wi-fi remember that i have not done anything extra on this to make this better so this is just regular connection on this laptop using the regular module that came about two years ago so my download rate right now comes to 441.12 and my upload rate is 31.77 which is a really good number now in order to factory reset the router back to default it's very simple there is a little hole right underneath of the router which you have to hold for six seconds and that's it all right so now let's go through and change your ssid name or password in this case also we're going to change the channels that they're in so for that you need to go to wi-fi makes it very simple and then go to configuration first here is you can change your name of your ssid and remember that's just once you cannot change both and also you can change your password so this is how easy it is to process and once it is done you can go right here and you can change this again this is not a monday 3 password that you need to use but this is just something very simple for us to process so i'm just going to go through and change it to something very simple make sure that you have a capital letter 0123 to make it a little bit long and perfect there you go and we're just going to say apply now it takes a couple of seconds for it to go through and disconnect that and reconnect it properly so we're just going to give it a couple of seconds for it to go through and accept that section of it and once it's done you're going to get this button says refresh so we will click on it to refresh now sometimes it has to disconnect and it will reconnect so it takes a couple of seconds for it to go through so there you go once it reboots this is what you should see now we just have to log in and we will click on login so now our ssid changed and our password has changed so now let's go through back to wi-fi and now we can go to 2.4 and here you will be able to change your mode also your channel it was on auto i changed it to number 13 which is a really blanked area for us so that way my wi-fi would work properly and also you go going to use your 20 to 40 megahertz wi-fi as a width so don't change it to 20 always leave it as a maximum which we better and then once it's done you can click on apply now i already done it so i do not have to do that part next thing is going to be the 5g network now same thing you can keep this as is and then go under channel you can change it to 48 or 44 whichever one will be really good for you for me 
auto is always the best and also the channel width is on 80 megahertz which is really wide range which is a good thing to have so i'm going to leave that too and also the beacon i'm going to keep it on 100 just like the 2.4 was also on 100 and then you can click on apply now it takes a couple of seconds for it to go through again and we're just going to wait for it to come back now again not to bore you guys we will fast forward this part of the scene once it's done click on refresh and it will ask you to log in again now remember if you get this that's fine you still have to wait a few more seconds for it to reboot and then that way you can go back main page and here you go now you log back in and you are connected to the internet now when you are connecting the routers itself make sure that you set up the first one and then the second one and then the third one should be really near to each other when you're setting up for a very first time but when you are trying to put it away from each other make sure that it should not be over 40 feet away from each other but again it's going to cover a wide area with the wi-fi I know that you can set up as a mesh network and it will decide by itself if you're going to fall under 2.4 or 5G network, but it will work a lot better than you setting it up as a 5G or a 2.4. All the links will be available in the bottom of this video, how you can order it and if you need more help. Except that, I hope you guys like our video. If you do like it, click the click the like button. Subscribe button on the top, comment in the bottom. Always remember to visit our own website, info, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Instagram and other social networking places and thank you.